Voices from Oxford has come to the Pharmacology Department today in the University of Oxford to talk to Paolo Tamaro, who is a lecturer here in the department, uh, associate professor, uh, a tutor in Queen's College in Physiology and Pharmacology. So good morning, Paolo. Good uh, morning, William. I understand you work on a very important area to do with blood vessels and how they're controlled. Can you tell us a little bit about your studies and, and, and why they're interesting? You're right, William. I'm interested in my lab. We are interested in blood vessels. Blood vessels are small pipes, of course, but they have some special properties. The wall of the archer is, in fact, composed of muscle cells. So muscle cells, what do they do? They, well, they can control the diameter of the arteries. Mm. In this way, I'm sure perhaps you have done it in your garden. When you press the hose pipe, you will see the pressure increasing. Yeah. And blood vessels can do precisely that. They can control the uh, perfusion of blood to organs, and they can also control blood pressure. Mm. So we are especially interested in some components of the muscle cells found in the arteries. OK, because these are the master controllers of things like blood pressure. I think you are right. Yes, the, the muscle is really what controls the diameter. But also the nervous system can control the ah. blood vessel. So it's all a bit complicated. Yeah. But what we really like understanding are small things called ion channels. OK. Can you explain what those are? I'm very happy to do that. Ion channels are small pores, canals, yeah. uh, and they allow ions that, I'm, as I'm sure you know, are charged particles. And yeah. these ions go in and out of the cells. Right. And they wouldn't normally get through the membranes, would they? But they so they have to have these holes. You are right. Without these holes, ions couldn't pass through the membrane. Right. And because they are charged particles, yeah. when they pass through the membrane, they generate some very small electrical currents. OK. These currents are important in controlling the muscle uh -huh. contraction. Right. You might have gone to the doctors, perhaps, and uh, they might have taken an ECG. Yeah. And an ECG is essentially a measurement that you can do by positioning electrodes on the chest. But it's actually a measurement of the activity of many ion channels uh -huh. found on the muscle of the heart. Oh, OK. So we're watching with an ECG, we're watching all these little ions coming in and out through channels in cells like these muscle cells that you're talking about. True. Indeed, ion channels are not only found in blood vessels, as I say, are also found in the, in the heart or even in the brain. Right. We are especially interested in blood vessels, though. Right. And um, when these ion channels don't work very well, thing, problems may arise. Okay. You may have, for example, problems in blood supply to the heart, a problem known as angina that can okay. be very severe, yeah. can lead to mm, heart attack. That's a sort of the, the severe pain on exercising. Sort of. That's precisely what angina is. It's yeah. a pain on exercise or it may be triggered by cold. Uh -huh. And that can be due indeed to blockages or constriction of the so-called coronary arteries, right. those vessels that fuel the heart with blood. And so, as I say, these tiny gated pores may, may be damaged or genetically altered, and that can cause disease. OK, so you can get some cases where people have inherited bad copies of these channels from their parents. Mm -hmm. That can also happen. In fact, a couple of years ago, we discovered a new mutation found indeed in, in a channel in the coronary arteries, and that can cause a rare but severe type of angina. Right. And we now hope to be able to use more molecules, drugs, to interfere with these channels and correct the problem right. when it arises. So presumably to try and get them to open up again. Indeed, in some cases the channel is too open, ah, in okay. some other cases maybe too close. Right. And with drugs you can try to correct the problem. Yeah. Try to open closed channels or to close channels that are too open. Yeah. So clearly getting new drugs for any of these sorts of diseases is very important, not just in the heart, I guess. You're right, not just in the heart. The current project we have in the laboratory, in collaboration with friends and colleagues in London, is actually about the brain. Mm. So we found that capillaries that are not arteries, but are those small little pipes, mm. uh, uh, the, the smallest of all, of all blood vessels, also have some muscle cells surrounding oh, their okay. walls. Because I think when, we, when we're taught about these, we think of them as being very delicate little tubes with almost nothing around them at all except those little thin endothelial cells, but I they've actually got muscle as well. I, I think you are right. Capillaries are described as very thin, yeah. small pipe, very delicate indeed. But there are also small cells. They are called actually pericytes. Ah, and yes. these pericytes are actually contractile. 
and they can control blood flow through these very delicate components, compartments. Right. right. And uh, myself and our colleagues, we begin to understand that alterations in these pericytes yeah. can be uh, one of the problems that arise during, during stroke, for example. Right. Or even in other diseases of the brain, such as Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. Now, that, that, that's clearly very important. There's a lot of Alzheimer's out there. There's a lot of stroke out there, isn't there? And, yeah. and so if we can try and ameliorate some of that, that'd be really important. It, is it also relevant to uh, things like migraines and so on, where people talk about this being something to do with uh, blood vessels in the, in the head, but maybe these are different blood vessels? Uh, yes, indeed. There is ongoing research on migraine, which is a very significant problem, mm. very widespread problem, mm. and indeed it seems that some blood vessels don't supply enough blood to certain regions of the brain. That's another area of investigation. It's not mm. precisely what I do, but I keep a close eye of the work researchers do in this area. I find it hugely fascinating. Yeah. So I, th I think the, the, the lesson we can take from, from this is that uh, these little holes in membranes that are controlled, mm -hmm. letting ions in and out, are vital for uh, the proper perfusion, the blood supply to organs like the heart and the brain. And they go wrong sometimes. And you're looking into ways of manipulating that with drugs and so on that can perhaps help us with a whole range of diseases. I think you, you are right. You made a very good summary of what we do in the lab. We actually, there is something else we enjoy sure. doing. So we don't only uh, look at the channels that are normally found in the human body, but we found that we can also use channels found in other species, such as plants or algae. Wow. And then include them into blood vessels right. to control the blood vessel function. Oh, Let me explain cool. this in yeah, slightly greater detail. Yeah. So there are some channels found in the blue algae, for example. Mm -hmm. The algae use these channels to move towards the, the light source. Okay. They, they need to be exposed to us, so they use it that way. But we have taken the gene from a blue al algae, mm. included it into a blood vessel, and what we found now is that the blood vessel can be controlled by using light, by using blue light. Oh, that's cool. That can be very useful and quite cool, actually. Yeah. You can control a blood vessel by simply using a blue light. Yeah. Uh, and that can be used, for example, to study drugs that can prevent constriction yeah. and can be used to treat, for example, angina, the problem I described earlier. Yeah. So it can be a very useful investigative tool. Very powerful, I imagine, as well as being cool. Well, we, we are also very excited. This overall uh, strategy is called optogenetics. Right. It has a complicated name, but what it means is that you can combine the genes, the genes coding for a channel in this case, yeah with optics. The optics yeah. refers to the light source and to yeah. the microscope you need to use yeah. to control Fantastic. the vessels that way. I shall follow that up with interest. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.